So this is day one on the uh, transition to uh, Latino issues in the United States. So we're going to uh, first begin with looking at these articles and uh, we'll pro probably be in groups and asked to either answer some questions or come up with something as we track some of the issues uh, regarding immigration in the United States post 9-11. So in class, we probably will watch or you will be asked to watch uh, this video ex, uh, that details the life of Marisol Conde Hernandez as she uh, graduates from South Brunswick High School. Here we see a video about her, you know, explaining her story. So we'll look at that at some point. And uh, here we're looking at an article, uh, which you, you're going to see a couple of comments that were left uh, from various articles. And here they're saying that Obama is a traitor. Um, uh, let's see, that he doesn't care about American citizens. Illegal is illegal. One of the arguments that comes up, you know, you, know, you have to come to this country legally. If you're illegal, that seems to be the problem. So individuals arguing this or using a law and order type argument. People voting for Obama is a traitor to this country. And Obama will not be satisfied until he turns the U.S. into a third world country. Look at some of the uh, other comments here. Uh, these are comments that were left uh, to the story involving the South Brunswick student. Um, here we're talking about questioning why is she allowed to attend a university with no social security number. It's too little late too little late to do anything with this rule. The only thing we can do is not reelect Omoron. Here it talks about immigrants are no longer illegal immigrants, but now they are here legally. Uh, so just a couple comments about the articles that, um, you know, some of the comments that were left. So here we see uh, the group articles and uh, we're looking here at some of the uh, I'll say a couple of items about them. So this one uses the word paradox and uh, where they're going with this is, is looking at the uh, situation historically with the United States and immigration. They use the term band-aid solution rather than, I can't see that word, a little blurry. Looks, looks like creative, curative reform. Can't make that out. Anyway, I'm not gonna make this larger. Anyway, uh, so for the United States relationship primarily with Mexico migration seemed to be a, a weird situation where the United States would encourage and then discourage. For example, if we look at World War I, we needed uh, labor hands. Uh, Mexicans were encouraged to come to the United States. And then by the time, I think it's 1929, the Mexican Repatriation Act takes place. And with the Mexican Repatriation Act, it was a mass deportation. So we're going to do a search here, Mexican Creation Act. We'll look at some images here and you see, let's see, there we go. This is the image, one of the images that I'm familiar with, 1930s. Uh, so we'll look at this later. We'll look at some of the articles, things that were written in the 20s. Um, and then going into the 30s with, with how that was addressed. So anyway, the issue here is, you know, that that system of or that process of we want to encourage and then discourage, encourage World War II, then discourage it, has created a situation where individuals are here. What are we going to do? So we see the number 11 million undocumented immigrants are living and two thirds have been here, how long did I say, for more than a decade. So we've created a environment where what are you going to do? Let's take this 11 million. Let's say all of them are illegal. It's 11 million people. What are you going to do? Have law enforcement go around, look for these individuals. And then let's say we find all 11. Let's just say all 11 million report here. And now they're ready for deportation. What are you going to do? Fly them out, use a, a, you know, a bus, trains. Either way, that is going to count money. And since we're talking about a significant amount, that definitely is going to uh, demand some resources. And so that's the some of that paradox that's there. Let's see. Here we're looking at the Obama administration saying that they spent $18 billion on immigration enforcement last year. 
more than it's spending on all other major federal law enforcement agencies. So they're questioning why is he spending so much there? They bring up the issue of Homeland Security. They also bring up the issue of 9-11. So here, if we take the United States, why is 9-11 an issue? Because uh, closer to 9-11, there was this belief that terrorists were going to come into the United States through Mexico and commit terrorist attacks throughout the country. And so there was a push. Well, let's seal off the border. Let's make it difficult. Then, of course, people challenged this and said, wait a minute, terrorists could also come in from Canada. Why are we focusing all of our energy here? And then it became a whole issue with regard to race um, and one that uh, became less about safety and combating terrorism simply because the emphasis was placed on the southern border, even though there were attempts to come in and commit terrorist attacks from the Canadian border. Move on to the next one. The immigration bill. Congress is considering it a bill, considering a bill that would make it a felony in the U.S. to impose new penalty employers for high sell. This one is looking at employers. So let's just say you own a business and you hired three illegals and you knew about it. You're paying these individuals one dollar, profiting, I don't know, 19 bucks off of their labor hourly. There is an interest. You know, this is exploitation that is yielding some money and you're probably very happy about that and these individuals are probably upset so this legislation is going to go after this individual and say this individual has committed a felony so the hope here is that this would put pressure on uh, people hiring and then they would do less hiring these individuals would now be in a situation where they have no work they have no money and the end result is they possibly will just decide to go back on their own because they cannot go to work. The problem is, how are you gonna enforce that? Good luck. Immigration March. Uh, when this article had come out, it was a march that took place and I remember in Los Angeles as well as in Phoenix. And there was a lot of criticism because people felt that they were protesting, Mexicans were protesting to stay in the United States, yet they were not waving the American flag that they showed up with Mexican flags. Let's see. Immigration March. Uh, I need a, a year here. Do you have a date? Uh, let's go. Let's do this. No American flag. That was the issue that people were really upset about. So people were upset. Um, that individual, even though we see an American flag, that people were showing up and uh, showing their allegiance to Mexico as opposed to the United States. And uh, that definitely was an issue that conservatives addressed. Um, I just remember watching this on the news and people were upset. Flying the Mexican flag in Los Angeles. So we see this section here. I haven't read uh, that one. I don't feel too comfortable with it, but again, I'm just trying to navigate here. Obama immigration plan seems to divide the Supreme Court. This article here uh, talks about the 11 million unauthorized aliens are here in the shadows. They are here whether we want them or not. Again, it goes back to this point. What are you going to do with 11 million people? So there are 11 million people here. What's been on the table? Well, let's give these individuals amnesty. Let's allow these individuals to stay here. Um, and for the most part, uh, this might change certain things, but people might just decide to stay here, especially if they're not here legally. And here we have some stories. And so when you're reading these stories, you could kind of uh, figure out um, your thoughts on this. And really what I want you to think about is one question, going back to the South Brunswick student. If somebody's here from two, Let's say their parents are illegal. They cross over, they make it to the United States with their two or their one year old. And they're, now it's 20 years later, that individual is 22. Like, what do you do with that individual? Do we send all of these individuals back or do we simply just uh, figure out a way to keep them here, even though technically they are here illegal, illegally? So that's the uh, issue here of debate. 